Hey guys, welcome back to another Harbour Unbox video. Today we're looking at graphics cards that cost well under $200 US. So if you're in the market for such a product, then hopefully we can steer you in the right direction. On hand we have the GTX 1050 Ti, along with the RX 470 4 gig card and the RX 460 4 gigabyte card. On the menu we have 25 games, and that should be more than enough to give us a clear picture of where things are at. Once again, as this is a budget GPU comparison, we'll be using our Core i3-6100T test machine. This humble little rig should represent the kind of processing power the vast majority of gamers spending less than $200 US on the GPU will be wielding. The latest AMD and Nvidia drivers have been used for testing, and updates to existing results have been made where necessary. The results are based on an average of 3 runs, and all testing takes place at 1080p. For those wondering, the RX 470 will be represented by the ASUS ROG Strix 4GB OC model, while the RX 460 4GB card being used is the Sapphire Nitro model. Meanwhile, the GTX 1050 Ti card being used is the little MSI 4G OC model. So with that, let's get to the benchmarks. Starting with Assassin's Creed Syndicate, a title that generally favours NVIDIA GPUs, we find that the 1050 Ti is 15% slower than the RX 470. Still, with an average of 64 FPS, the 1050 Ti was still able to deliver very playable performance. The RX 470 hands the 1050 Ti a much more significant blow in Batman Arkham Knight. Here the GeForce GPU was 27% slower despite averaging 62 FPS. Meanwhile the 470 never dipped below 55 frames per second at 1080p using the ultra quality settings. For now we prefer the DirectX 11 API for Battlefield 1, but we'll check out the DirectX 12 results next. Still using DX11, the 1050 Ti was still 26% slower than the RX 470. So another decent win for AMD here then. This is why we prefer DX11 for now. While the average frame rate looks great, DX12 suffers from constant frame drops. The newest game in our battery of benchmarks is Call of Duty Infinite Warfare, a game universally loved by all. Here the GTX 1050 Ti was 36% slower than the RX 470, averaging just 49 FPS to the Radeon's 76 FPS. Here we have an old favourite for testing, Crisis 3. Can the GTX 1050 Ti play Crisis, where here you ask? Well yes, it can, but only just, dipping as low as 33 FPS at times. Meanwhile, with a 38 FPS average, the 1050 Ti was 27% slower than the RX 470. The 1050Ti is just 3% faster than the RX 464GB in Deus Ex Mankind Divided, so unsurprisingly it trails the 470 by a rather massive 42% margin. That said, it is interesting to note that the 470 does dip quite low in relation to the average frame rate. As a result, comparing the minimum frame rate sees the 1050Ti trail by just a 16% margin. Dirt Rally is the polar opposite to Mankind Divided, and I don't mean that because one's a racing simulator and the other a first person shooter. Rather, I'm referring to how AMD and Nvidia GPUs handle these titles. For the first time, we see that the 1050 Ti moves ahead of the RX 470, delivering 21% more performance. In fact, even the standard 1050 is faster than the 470 here. This title very clearly favours the green team. Doom using Vulcan plays nicely into the hands of AMD. Here the 1050Ti was 44% slower than the RX 470, though I should note both delivered well over 60 frames per second at all times. Also worth mentioning is the fact that the 1050Ti is just 5% faster than the 4GB 460 in this test. The RX 470 remains ahead for the F1 2016 test as the 1050Ti finds itself trailing by an 18% margin. That said, the 1050Ti was also 15% faster than the 4GB460, so not a bad result for NVIDIA overall. Testing Fallout 4 using the high quality preset with TAA enabled, we find that the 1050Ti is good for an average of 70fps at 1080p. Despite that impressive result, it was almost 20% slower than the 470 though. Here the 1050Ti enjoys a 29% performance advantage over the 4GB 460 while it was just 6% faster than the vanilla 1050. As was the case when testing Mankind Divided, we see that although the 1050Ti is considerably slower than the RX 470 when comparing the average frame rate, the minimum result is much closer. The 1050Ti was 23% slower when comparing the average frame rates, but just 4% slower for the minimum frame rate, a curious result from Far Cry Primal indeed.
Moving to Gears of War 4, we find some pretty competitive results, largely helped by the fact that the 1052i is over 30% faster than the standard 1050 here. This meant that the 1052i was just 12% slower than the RX 470, so a strong result for Nvidia here. Continuing the strong run, the 1050Ti takes charge in Grand Theft Auto V, rendering 3 FPS more than the RX 470, making it 5% faster. The fact that the 1050Ti maintained at least 60 FPS at all times in our test was impressive. Okay guys, rule number 3 of Benchmark Land, stay hydrated. I've forgotten this rule from time to time and I've paid dearly for it the next day, so make sure you take a moment to stop and get some water. Alright, let's get back at it. The extra 33% performance provided by the RX 470 doesn't go unnoticed in Mafia 3. In fact, almost reaching a 60 FPS average means we might even be able to use the medium quality settings. Exciting stuff. Anyway, the 1052i was 25% slower than the 470, but 30% faster than the 4GB 460. The GTX 1052i was 20% slower than the RX 470 in Shadow of Mordor when comparing the average frame rate. Benchmarking with Mirror's Edge Catalyst, we find that the 1050Ti is just 11% slower than the RX 470, as it averaged 66 FPS. It was also 32% faster than the 4GB RX 460. The 1050Ti is already pushing over 100 FPS in Overwatch at 1080p using the Ultra Quality preset. So there won't be any real need to go much faster. Nevertheless, the RX 470 was almost 20% faster, averaging 134 FPS. The Radon graphics cards don't really like Steam's DirectX 11 version of Quantum Break, and here we see the minimum frame rate of the RX 470 dipping below that of the standard 1050. Despite that, the average frame rate was still very strong though. Yet again, we find another game where the RX 470 appears to dominate the 1050 Ti, until you look at the minimum frame rates that is. The 1050 Ti was on average 25% slower, but just 4% slower or 1 FPS slower when checking the minimum frame rate. The 1050Ti was good for at least 60 FPS in Star Wars Battlefront, and yet this meant it was still 27% slower than the RX 470, which easily cracked the 70 FPS barrier. We couldn't forget The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt, so here it is. The 1050Ti was 27% slower than the RX 470, but 28% faster than the RX 460. Wow, AMD dominates Rainbow Six Siege. Here the 1050Ti wasn't just 39% slower than the RX 470, but also 4% slower than the 4GB RX 460. For those not yet bored with the division, the weapon of choice here looks to be the RX 470, as it was 45% faster than the 1050Ti. AMD lays the smackdown in Titanfall 2. Here the 1050Ti was 38% slower than the RX 470, averaging just 50 FPS to the Radeon's 81 FPS. That said, the 1050Ti was 32% faster than the 4GB RX 460. Well, you made it. The last game we benchmarked. Total War Warhammer was tested using the DirectX 12 API, and here the 1050Ti was just 6% slower than the 470, in what is a very surprising result. Not only that, but the GeForce GP was actually 4% faster when comparing the minimum frame rate. Well, there you have it. An in-depth look at how the GTX 1050 Ti stacks up against the RX 470 and RX 460 4GB graphics cards. Now, to wrap things up, let's take a look at the results from all the games tested in one big graph. First up, we're checking out how the 1050 Ti stacks up against the cheaper RX 460 4GB. In terms of performance, it pretty much is a landslide. The only game to favour the RX 460 was Rainbow Six Siege by a small margin, while performance was also close in Mankind Divided and Doom using Vulcan. Nevertheless, overall the 1050Ti was on average 29% faster, and this figure has no doubt been helped by the massive wins in titles such as Quantum Break, Overwatch, Gears of War 4 and Dirt Rally. Given the relatively small difference in price, the 1050Ti certainly looks like the smarter option here, but we will get to that soon in the cost per frame analysis. Okay, so here the bars are pretty much all going the other way. That is to say, for the most part, the 1050Ti was slower than the RX 470, but no surprises there. The 1050Ti was on average 22% slower, only finding its way out in front in just two titles, Dirt Rally and Grand Theft Auto V. The 1050Ti was crushed in all the usual suspects though, and we can now add Titanfall 2 and Call of Duty Infinite Warfare to the list. Before we jump to the cost per frame figures, let's just take a quick look at efficiency by comparing power consumption against the average frame rates. Efficiency has been where many of these GPU battles have been won and lost over the past few years. As you can see on average, the RX 470 was just 29% faster than the GTX 1050 Ti. However, that extra performance came at a cost. 
entire system consumption increased by over 70%, from 118 watts to a much more hungry 202 watts. Worse still, the RX 460 was 23% slower on average, but pushed system consumption 27% higher. Granted, these figures won't be hugely impactful for everyone. If you have a standard desktop rig with a 350 watt or greater power supply and aren't worried about a little extra heat, but do care about absolute performance, then the RX 470 still represents exceptional value. However, if operating temperatures, volume, and overall consumption are things you very much care about, then the 1050 Ti might be the more desirable option here. Starting with our scatter plot, we see that the GTX 1050 Ti and RX 470 are actually quite similar in terms of value, despite the GeForce GPU being over 20% slower. Meanwhile, the RX 460 4GB looks to be pretty poor value, while the 4GB version is roughly on par with the GTX 1050. Moving to the bar graph, which I'm told many of you prefer, arranging the data by the average frame rate sees the RX 470 way out in front, with the second lowest cost per frame. Arranging the graph by cost per frame, we find the 1050 2GB provides the best bang for your buck, as it just edged out the RX 470. Meanwhile, the 1050 Ti was 6% more costly per frame when compared to the RX 470. In short, the GTX 1050 Ti was on average 22% slower than the RX 470. Meanwhile, the $140 MSRP means it's just 18% cheaper. There were a few games where the RX 470 didn't look nearly as impressive when taking the minimum frame rate into account, and we hope AMD can address these performance issues with upcoming driver updates. Uh, it has to be said though, AMD has been doing an exceptional job with their drivers lately. Even with all the data now in, picking between these two graphics cards really doesn't seem to be that easy, and I'd say that's because they're both great products. Um, once again, it's a case of, I don't really think you can go that wrong with either. There's probably no wrong choice here. I mean, the 1050 Ti clearly is the more efficient GPU, while the RX 470 was outright faster and probably the better value choice overall. Uh, so far, we haven't discussed DirectX 12 performance too much. We included a bit of DirectX 12 testing, but I haven't discussed the results on which card I think is better for those kind of games. And for me personally, the jury's still out on DirectX 12, um, and I really don't think either of these GPUs will be fighting the DirectX 12 battle. I seriously doubt that'll be the situation. For upcoming games that do support DirectX 11 and DirectX 12, we'll likely find a similar situation to what we found with Battlefield 1. Uh, by that I mean a situation where the GeForce graphics cards should be using the DirectX 11 API, while AMD will probably be best with DirectX 12. While on that subject, going forward, it might make more sense to test games such as Battlefield 1 uh, with the NVIDIA GPUs using DirectX 11, while the AMD GPUs use DirectX 12 uh, in the same sort of graph we display. Basically, in this video, how we did the DirectX 11 and DirectX 12 testing, what I'm suggesting is just one graph where DirectX 11, DirectX 12, obviously the APIs used would be clearly stated, but since you know, there's no visual difference, but these, you know, perform better DirectX 11, better performance probably with DirectX 12 for AMD. It might make more sense to do it that way. So I don't know if that's something you guys think would be worth doing or find it misleading. I don't know. Let me know what you think anyway, because that could be an option. Getting back to the matter at hand, I am sticking with our original findings back in August. If you're going to get the RX 460, get the 2GB model. For those chasing performance of around 60 frames per second, the 4GB version has little to offer in most games over the cheaper 2GB version. So it's $20 you don't need to spend really. Not only that, but for $10 less we actually prefer the GTX 1050 anyway. On the other side of it though, rather than spending $120 on the RX 460 4GB, we highly recommend spending $140 on the GTX 1050 Ti. That 17% increase in cost will net you almost 30% more performance and a considerably more efficient graphics card to boot. However, if you can afford to go as high as $170, then the RX 470 becomes very appealing and even opens the option up for cheap 1440p gaming. So in short, if we had around $100 to spend, we would be getting a GTX 1050 2GB graphics card. For between $120 and $150, we'd get the GTX 1050 Ti. And for between $150 and $190, the RX 470 seems like the way to go. For those spending $200 or more, we previously went with the GTX 1060 3GB, 
but it might be time to revisit that comparison. With the RX 470's revised price and AMD's newfound form, the 1063GB may not be the best option here. All right, well, I'm going to stop there before I uh, go into some other sort of whatever comparison, rattle on about something and drag this video out even longer than I have so far. Uh, I hope the testing was useful and I hope there's enough information there for you guys to make your own conclusions. We will, of course, continue to monitor new games as they're released and see how AMD and NVIDIA stack up there. So that'll be something we do forever. <laughs> uh, but as it stands, I'm confident whichever of these GPUs you buy, you're going to have a great gaming experience, great bang for your buck. Uh, and there's really, as I said, no wrong option there. So that, that wraps it up. Until next time, stay classy.